starting with OCALC Pro 6.0, there is additional support for ensuring that any poles or lines that you model are in compliance with any easements. Uh, the simpler of the two techniques is what's called the easement radius. If I pull up a pole of any sort here, let me get done calculating, and I pull up the pole object, you will see there is an attribute called the easement radius. Cur uh, by default it's set to zero, in which case it ignores this value, but if I set to a value of, let's say, you know, 12 feet or, or something, then when I perform, perform an auto guy operation or any operation that applies an element that contacts the ground, it ensures that that element is actually within the radius that I set here. Um, so that's, that's the simplest. The more complex is the fact that you can import easement polygons for your line design. So let's pull up our GIS tab before we start our line design. If I go under GIS files and I say I want to, because I have no line design, preview an easement polygon. So now we're previewing this polygon and let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Yes. I can say, okay, I'm going to construct a line and this is the easement that I have to comply with. So, I go ahead and I say file new line using the line wizard. We've done this many times. I'm going to go ahead and start putting my elements in here. I'm going to make ones clearly outside the polygon. I say I'm done. Now it's going to pop up. I'm going to just overwrite this one I've done before. Yes. It's going to say and say, hey, would you like to add that GIS element that you were previously previewing? to this line design. Yes, I would. Okay, it brings in the polygon. Now I have to go over to the polygon, select it, and say that this polygon represents an easement. I'm going to say easement true. Now that I've told it that this is an easement, if I go look at my clearances and violations tab and go into the easement sub tab and say are there any violations, you see there's in fact two. You'd think there'd only be one, but by clicking on each one, it'll, it'll take me to the pole and tell me what the problem is. So the first problem is, is that the anchor for the down guy on pole number one actually extends outside of the easement. And in fact, if we look at it, that is in fact true. So what we can do is we can go over to our 3D view. Um, I'm, I'm going to remediate the problem by setting this anchor so that it's at 270 and lead length is 13. That ought to do it. Let's go back to the line design. Now I think we're okay. Rerun my violation. It's now my only violation is pole number 8. It takes me to pole number 8. And pole number 8 is is indeed all, all the way outside of the polygon, so obviously that's the problem. If I just, because it's selected, say shift click and put it inside, set his coordinates like so, he'll now comply. Now obviously I'd have to fix the construction all up and all that, but we're just looking at the easement violation. Now there's no easement violation, so all of the ground co contacting elements of this line design are within my easement polygon. And you can have multiple easement polygons. The polygons can come from shape files, GeoJSON files, KML files, and almost all GIS systems and CAD systems can export in those formats, so you'll be all set no matter what format your easement polygons and other line design support polygons and polylines are in.